Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Candy and today I'm going to be talking to you about being kind. Now, I know this is probably very elementary, but I definitely want to stress the importance of practicing being kind to each other, to general population, to the next human being next to us. So I'm going to open up with the scripture that I have been uh, working out of and it's in 1st Timothy. It says, likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can train the younger women to love their husbands, love their children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind. So my focus today on this video is to be kind. So. I'm going to be talking, I'm going to mention a lady in the Bible, her name was Dorcas, and she was actually known in the book of Acts chapter 9, this is where she's mentioned, for being a very generous woman, very kind, very giving in her community. She used to make these beautiful robes, and she would give them out to the less fortunate, the poor people, people that were financially struggling, they were poor. And so she would make these beautiful robes and she would give them away. There came a time where she got really sick and she actually died. And then what happened was that when she died, her friends, she had a group of widows around her. They went ahead and washed her body. This was the custom. They went ahead and washed her body and they laid her in a room upstairs where she lived. And they had heard that Peter was nearby ministering. And so a couple of men went and they begged him they said peter you come maybe you can help you can do something i don't know right so she lived in joppa and peter was about which today is tel aviv in israel and peter was in Lydda, which was about 10 i'm gonna say 10 minutes away 10 miles away and so he went and through the power of jesus and his healing power dorcas was raised from the dead so imagine the community there and so just that alone brought a lot of other people to put their faith in jesus who wouldn't he did a miracle and so dorcas was dorcas was a woman that paul basically illustrated showing kindness throughout her life there's a scripture in the bible that tells us how we are to conduct ourselves in our walk with God. And I was meditating on what I was going to be sharing today and, and to be kind. And I've been spending a lot of time in, on social media. I've been looking at reels on Instagram, just general reels that come through the news feed and Facebook, the shorts and YouTube. And there's so much of a push of women basically telling men off and that's their way of i guess making their stand against whatever it is that they're feeling they're being mistreated or whatever the case may be that causes them to take that kind of a position and this video is different this video is bible based and so there's two things that god tells us to do in matthew 22 uh, 37 through 39 and he says, you know what, just do these two things. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, not to be saying anything bad or rude or ugly or mean to anyone. And to treat other people the way you would like to be treated. Every day I have to choose how I'm going to treat people in my life. Whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's co- I keep looking up guys because I have stuff coming through. I posted a reel on my Instagram and it's a lot of likes. It's a, it's a silly reel. Anyway, people are so easily entertained. It's just funny. So every day I get to choose how I'm going to treat family, friends, co-workers, employers, strangers, people we interact at the stores, at restaurants. So I have a choice. And so I wrote down some things that can help us to practice being kind to each other or just to people, with people in general. And one of those things is, because if you're gung-ho, like those reels and those shorts that I'm seeing, that you wanna make your point across, and when I'm seeing them come across, really they're coming across as just rude, disrespectful, in your face, 
And you have to, it's important that you pray that God change your heart, that God help you to see through his eyes and not through your eyes, because God sees more than we do. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that God sees a person's heart. We see the actions or we see the outside, but God looks at the inside. And so to have, to say a prayer that says, you know what, God, let me see through your eyes and not mine. And let me deal with it accordingly. Another thing is, is that we have to be looking. I want to encourage you to look for opportunities to do random acts of kindness to strangers. Just be kind. A random act. It can be anything. If you're at the office and you want to get your breakfast, pick up a taco, you can get two or three more and just put them out in your work area and you know, your little area. Some of us work with three or four people around us and say, you know what? I got some extra tacos if anybody wants one. That's just being nice. That is such a blessing. Because you never know if your coworker that day got up on the wrong side of the bed, has had red lights all the way to work, stop signs, got a ticket, and something as simple as a kind gesture of offering them a breakfast taco will just bless them. I know it would bless me any kind of act that is kind. So be thinking of opportunities of how you can do random acts of kindness. One thing that I've started to do recently is whenever we're out at restaurants or we have delivery service or whatever, something to the services that are provided for us, I make it a point to tip more than the 15% because I know what it's like to be appreciated monetary wise. So I don't have wealth, a bank full of money, but the little that I have, when God impresses me to give a little more, I am obedient because I know that God wants to bless them. And in that act of obedience, he wants to tell them, I see you. I love you. You're going to be okay. It's in something as a simple act is just raising the tip amount. God will speak to that person. And so that's something that I've started to practice. And I actually get excited because I know that it's going to bless them. And I know that it's going to make their day. So just little tidbits, ideas, look around for opportunities to be a blessing, to be kind to those around you. Another thing is keeping track of dates. Facebook makes it real easy because they always notify us. I say they. Facebook notifies us when there's a birthday of our family or friends on Facebook. And that's a perfect opportunity to wish them a happy birthday. And do you know that there are people that even with notifications have attitude? And they're like, I'm not going to wish that so-and-so a birthday. They didn't do this or they didn't do this for me or that happened. Or how sad to miss out on an opportunity to be kind. Knowing or not knowing that something as simple as a birthday wish over social media is going to put a smile on their face and bless them so again be looking out look around in your surroundings if you see somebody who's a loner if you see somebody that's kind of quiet or set apart to make it a point to be kind to them naturally organically that's why you pray about it and you ask god to show you how to do that so the opportunities to show kindness are endless. It's important that this is something that we practice in our daily living. So I'm going to be reading some scriptures because I think it's important to have the word of God to support some of these things that I'm sharing. So there is a biblical perspective. In other words, how God sees things in the Bible, we're taught to do good. So. I'm going to say, we're going to say number one, it says we're to do good to all people, everybody. It says, I'm going to read Galatians 6, 9 and 10. It says, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest. Sorry guys. If we do not give up, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Sometimes it's easier for us to do good to strangers and then our own family, <laughs> we're not nice. <laughs> and so you see in the scripture where it says, and in due time or at the proper time, we're going to reap a harvest if we do not give up. 
In other words, you're going to get back whatever you put in, regardless of the reaction or the response of the people. If you put in kindness, if you put in goodness, it's an investment in God's kingdom. God says you're going to reap that back. You're going to get that back. And you might get it back through your job. You might get that back through your children. Somebody is, your child falls under the grace with the teachers. And it's because of you planting those seeds of kindness in other people. So think about that. Think about the investment of being kind. Second thing is you do good because, because you're a Christian, because you're saved, because you're a believer. We represent God. Some people will never see Jesus the way we have experienced God, and it'll only be through your life. And so it's important that we understand that, how we conduct ourselves and how we show kindness that it be representative of how God is with us. God loves us so much and he brings out the sun every day and every day he provides whether we're good, whether we're bad, whether we're grateful, whether we're ungrateful. That's God's love. It's unconditional. It's not based on how we act. God loves us just because he loves us and he's kind to us because he's a kind and loving God. And this is an example that we are to follow, right? Sometimes you'll see people, well, I'll do for her because she does for me. How about we do for the one that doesn't do for us? Because that would be the characteristic of God. Find somebody that will not be able to pay you back, will not be able to give back to you because that is true kindness being exercised says this is in Ephesians chapter 2 it says for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do so there are going to be opportunities right in front of your face that God has placed there to see what you're going to do and so just think about that another thing is doing good involves or it includes that what we say, not just what we do. Our words carry a lot of weight. It says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful, good for building others up, their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. This is a powerful scripture because there's so much of the opposite going around. In today's world, they push you or they encourage you, they support you if you speak your mind without any regard to the other person's feelings. And the Bible, you have to be careful with that because the Bible says to speak the truth, but to do it in love. If what you're about to say is going to tear down that person, then you need to slow down and you need to be careful and measure your words because God will hold us accountable in how we speak to others and how we deal with others because God created them too. God loves them too. And so I'm going to read it again. It says, do not let unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful, good for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So God gives us an opportunity every day to build each other up, to build somebody up. Take advantage of it. Ask God to show you, to teach you, and how to encourage and how to show kindness, not just in what we do, but in what we say. The next thing is that you do good work to show kindness when it comes to co-workers, when it comes to your boss. It says Ephesians 6, Chapter 6, 5, 7, and 8. It says, Slave, Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not men. As you know that the Lord will reward everyone for whatever good he does, whether he is slave or free. You know what this is saying? That even when your bosses don't notice the great work that you're doing, that they don't notice the extra mile that you go. This scripture says that God is watching 
and God is seeing you and God will reward you according to the good things that you're doing. Promotion doesn't come from man. Sometimes people want to kiss up to the bosses and run errands and give them Starbucks and okay, you go ahead and do that. But someone that is walking with God understands the scripture that promotion comes from God. That's why sometimes you'll see people move up the ladder and you're thinking, how did they get up there? How did they get? Because God is watching out for them and God wants to watch out for you too. And so do good when nobody's watching. Do good because God is watching. Don't cheat the system. Don't, you know, there's people that go and take extra breaks and leave the majority of the work to the other co-workers. All of these things, think back and reflect. Am I slacking? Am I giving my best? Am I doing my best in where I'm at now? And if you find yourself short that you're not, that's okay. Fix it. Just say, you know what, God, I'm sorry. Help me to be that when I do things that I understand that I'm doing them unto you. You're my boss. And so the last thing is, and this one's a good one, guys. It says, a Christian should repay evil with good. Look at this. First Thessalonians 5.15, it says, Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. The other day I was sharing a video, and because as women, we want to justify why we're fighting with somebody or why we're being mean to them, and, and you don't know what they did. The Bible says it right here. Don't pay Two wrongs don't make a right. Two wrongs do not make a right. And so not only that, in 1 Peter 3, 9, I'm going to read this. It says, do not pay evil or with insult, but with blessings. That's crazy because we live in a society that says totally the opposite. We live in a tooth for tooth, eye for eye. But God's word is totally the opposite. And it says, because it, to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. When you bless others that do wrong to you, God blesses you. It says, for whoever would love life and see good days must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. That means that you make an effort to live in peace. You make an effort to do right, to do good, to be kind to those that are not kind. That is the ultimate of being kind. So it says, I'm going to read it one more time. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing. Because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. God wants to bless you. Whoever would love life and see good days must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. So be kind. I hope that this video helps because I can tell you from my personal experience that when I have put these areas in my life to practice, I have seen God move on my behalf. And I, I would like to know and believe that you would allow God to do the same for you. So I hope this video helps. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, click the button, do the notification bell so that whenever I upload videos, you'll be notified. And as always, mwah, do something good for you. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.